if you just start animating straight ahead, you often end up in a frenzy of stuff. And after two or three hours of it, you decide you'd rather be doing something else with your life. Over the years, the great animators developed a solid working approach, a method as how to go about it, so that you don't get all tangled up in drawings, or in the case of the computer, you end up where you really didn't want to, where you didn't want to be. So where do we start? And what do we do first? Then what do you do? And what do you do after that? And after that? Let's take a, we'll take a basic walk, a mundane walk, something without much character to it, and we'll begin to block it out. We'll start with the key positions and then the extreme positions. Now this is the important thing. Keys and extremes. I'm going to circle the keys. I mean, animators love curves, and curves are beautiful to watch, so they tend to circle all these drawings. You know, you draw, I've been drawing one, here's five, I'm circling them, and you know, I'm circling three. I had a Polish animator once, <laughs> Stepan, he, <laughs> He would go down the page, this, he'd go, this, take this column, he'd go one, two, three, four, five, and it was just circles all the way down the page of the numbers. And I said, what are you doing that for? He said, this animation is round, this circle, lovely, lovely. <laughs> so we love, we love circles. But the idea was that your key is a, uh, a storytelling drawing. The keys are quite, you can use a key as an extreme, but the extremes are not keys, if you see what I mean. Your key drawings, they are the storytelling drawings. If you did a stick figure storyboard, or a good storyboard, I mean, and I'm just gonna walk in and pick up this, and I'm gonna write something here. If I were to draw that on a storyboard, I'd probably draw the, the character coming in, right? That would be drawing one, maybe. That would be a key, right? What's the next storytelling drawing? It isn't here. It, is, it isn't, it isn't, it's here. It isn't this step. It isn't that. It's this, it's touching the contact drawing. Like, storytelling drawing, key, Key, key. It's probably at the end of having written something. That's how to think about it. What are your keys? You can then film them, or if you're, your positions uh, in the computer, here's the creature, or whatever. He does this, and he does that. Three key positions, and you circle them. Now with our, um, with the graphic animation, you, you, you would draw, you might figure it out in little, little tiny drawings, those keys, and then you do a decent drawing of the, of the character. You do your first position. You get a nice drawing of this guy here. And then you get a nice drawing here and a nice drawing there. You've already got your three storytelling things. You can film them on the video. The director will know what's happening. You can see the timing crudely from those three, and you're, you've got confidence. The extremes will be, what are the next important drawings? We've got this key. Obviously, the next thing I'm gonna do to draw, having gotten these three fence posts or supports or pillars is this step. He's going to go here, right? That, and, and we're going to call this the contact drawing, not where the foot is down, and certainly not when it's down here taking the weight. It's going to be extreme, I mean key, extreme where the 
the heel contacts the ground, or if the, maybe the thing contacts it all at once, the whole foot, but for sake of argument, where it contacts, that's your next important drawing, right? The next one, the next extreme is going to be that drawing, where I contact the next foot. And I would say maybe, I think, did I inadvertently, did I do that? If I lifted my pants slightly to, so as not to pull, to stretch them, I think I did that inadvertently, you know. Okay, so key, contact, which is an extreme, contact, which is an extreme, that's an extreme. Then the next one would be the contact, just where, where the fingers are touching. And then there might be an interesting, uh, oh, let's passing position in here, I'm not sure. But it would be the start of the writing and then the end. And those would be your extremes. Today, everybody's calling, in, in the normal animation, they're calling extremes keys and key animators, and it's rubbish. Milt Call was the key animator, and the, he did the key scenes first. <laughs> that was the true ver version. And when I finally got to see him work a lot, I'd say, why did you circle that drawing? He said, oh, that's my key drawing. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that's the drawing I'm working on. That's the important drawing. I remember I went into Frank Thomas one day, and they were working on the Aristocats. And, 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 and he's drawing this cat up a tree, smiling, uh, chatting up a lady, sort of like this, I don't know, like this, up in a tree. And he's singing this song, and he's, he's chatting up the lady cat down here. And he said, God, I've been on this goddamn drawing all day. I mean, I mean, oh, geez, I can't get it right. You know, I'm, I'm having a terrible job. And I said, I said, he's having a terrible job doing one drawing? God, how's he ever going to get any work out? You know, if he's spending all day doing one drawing or all afternoon, and, he, and, and uh, later, I realized, of course, what he's doing is he's doing the key. He's gonna, that's the important drawing in the scene for him. And he was working in and out of it. You know, he's going to use that, he's going to bring into that drawing, he's going to stay there and do his performance based around that drawing. So that is a vital drawing. He has to get it right. Now, what happens often, having done, having done your, uh, say we got this one, Having done this one, having gotten these ones down here, or the extremes, and maybe in anticipation you might put in as another extreme here before he touches it, you might find by the time you get down there, you want to change the foot, or you want to change the arm, or you want to, it just doesn't feel, you want to change it. So you rub a bit of it out, and you change your key. That uh, often happens, right? And then you come up in an interesting way, and then you write. You do the extra drawings. That's how to think about it. Now we come, we're going to, in a minute, we're going to come to the third, the next complication, which is the drawing between <laughs> drawing one and the first contact between the key and, say, the first contact, which is going to be the passing position in a walk or the breakdown. I never know what to call it. I mean, it's one of the, it's, the middle position. We come to this, but you can see in a walk, in a normal person's walk, um, we do this, you do the steps first. Click, 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 draw this, draw that one, draw this one. They're all extremes. And the position in the middle on a normal walk of a person, the hips go up and the head goes up on the passing position, normally. So, drawing <laughs> one, up, there's your passing position, smack in the middle, two, passing position, three, passing position, four, passing position, five. Okay? That's how we think of a walk. So, here are the keys which tell the story like a comic strip.
Here are the extremes. Most of them are contacts. Now, break the scene down into middle positions called the passing positions or breakdowns. Then we add our in-betweens and we've done the scene. Now we know the functions of the keys, the extremes, the breakdowns or passing positions, and the in-betweens. And we've got everything in order. So this is our basic method to build a scene. We'll be doing much more interesting things with it later on. Of course, the fancy stuff comes later on. What we're showing is, is the way to think about it and the way to go about doing it. So we'll look now at, th at the three ways that animators work, and we'll find the best way. First is the, the straight ahead method. Three ways, three ways to animate. Which is just start drawing. like a kid in the, school, in the corner of the math book. And you just get your paper and you think what you're going to do, take a deep breath and start. And what happens is that you get a wonderful flow from it. Flow, spontaneity. Uh, things occur. Inventions occur, strange things occur. You're going to start walking. You know, here we go. I'm, I'm walking straight ahead and I'm into my anime. I'm doing all these drawings and I feel like, and I sort of look, oh, look, camera. Well, that's interesting. I'm doing an interesting movement here. And I, oh, where was I? I'm picking up the, and well, things occur. And some of them very nice. <laughs> interesting things occur, I'll just put. the natural way. See what happens. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> uh, the the, the uh, bad thing about it is, and, and, and you can put your numbers on afterwards. You know, you're doing all these drawings, unless they fall on the floor, and then you're really in trouble. But you can work fast in a heated form. Um, put the numbers on after, so it's not complex. Um, but the bad part of it is that it exp things expand. Things expand. Uh, we lose the point. of the scene, uh, tendency to lose the, the point of the scene. And sizes change dramatically. You know, you're, you're animating a, a creature that's this size, and as you're in the heat of creativity, he ends up about this size, only you're trying to walk him on a straight plane. You know, and the hilarious thing, Ken Harris and I used to work this way together, and we, we had a system in the end where I'd do a bunch of stuff, and then he'd get angry, saying, oh, God damn it, you're animating everything. So I'd get up, and then he'd do it, and then, and then he'd say, oh, I need some drawings here. So I'd sit down, and, I'd, and we would go straight ahead, kind of. And my character, because of the way he was a modest man, everything would get smaller and smaller, 
<laughs> and I would take over and everything would get bigger and bigger. So, and then you'd run the scene and it would be changing violently. It didn't seem to matter, and we have to clean it all up, after, fix it up after. But, uh, so, and this is, the way that, this is the way they did it in the early days, you know. And the director, of course, hates you because instead of having somebody come in and say, my father's dead, they're coming in and they're, my father's dead. <laughs> you know, because they're into anime. It's flow, man, flow. See, so uh, the next method that they worked out, and this was in, right after, right around Three Little Pigs, 30, 1933, was the pose to pose method. There's a quote of Disney saying, I'm sure that there's a scientific approach to this stuff. And they sure went at it in a scientific way. In a, they certainly went at it in a very practical way, testing everything, test everything, and figured this out, which is the pose to pose using key drawings. And I'll circle them, drawings. Uh, and this gave you the, the pro is the clarity, the clarity of what's happening. You can test it, the director can see it, the producer can see it, you can see it. It's calculated and it's strong. And what they tried to do with this, which we'll show you, I'll show you methods, the, the problem was then to go nicely so if we got a happy uh, fellow oh no let's say he's sad and he's going to go to happy where do we go in the middle to go nicely from one to the other. See what I mean? But you know where the hell you are. You know how long the scene is. And you're, you're doing your job. I mean, you're, you're fulfilling the function of the scene. And, and uh, it's also very easy, easy to assist. Easy. Uh, the producer loves you because it's, you can put charts on it, <coughs> charts, <laughs> and have the assistant, uh, have other people do the work, a lot of the work. And it doesn't strain the milk of the, say you have a, one good animator who's got to cover a lot of territory, he can do some rather nice drawings or clear positions, and everybody else can, with indications, however you do it, everybody else can then slave away carrying it through. So that became, for quite a while, the method they used. Oh, I haven't put the, the, the contrary. The con is loss of flow and loss of spontaneity. The studio is making money, the stuff is working, but it just doesn't have the zing. Three. The best method which they developed later into a system um, is the combination of both, obviously. Straight ahead. Here's what you do. First, oh, 
Those are Planet Small thumbnail drawings. Do they call that, still call that thumbnail drawings? Little drawings where you don't have to spend much time. I used to take my little drawings, and of course, in, as you know, in the crummy little drawing, or in the little rough drawing, you have somehow the human aesthetic built into us, gets the shape of everything real clear. You blow it up, and then I just try to do a nice drawing on top of this thing. If I didn't, I'd have an enormous trouble doing the big drawing. Anyway, the, the, the thing is you draw up your keys that, that, that tell the story. And they usually are the storyboard drawings. The second, the, that running around thing with Roger Rabbit, the first minute or so, I did very, very careful color, big color magic marker drawings, which I used almost as extremes in the end, um, so that, and shot them as an animatic uh, so that Spielberg and everybody would calm down and, and see, oh, well, that's going to be good. Then we just had thumbnail scribbles for, for all the running around stuff in the kitchen. I mean, really scribbles. I mean, that was the baby. And that was the, uh, he's, re he's jumping for the, for the clock pendulum. I mean, stuff like that. And I, don't, I can't remember whether they even shot them or not for in, the, in the film. I don't think we did. But I, 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 I used those little scribbles and then did, blew them up and did nice drawings on top of them. Okay. Then do the contact drawings, i.e. the drawings that have to be there, have to be there. If it's a drawing where I'm coming in here and I'm going to push this forward, I wouldn't do it where it's gripped. I would do it just where the, if the palm is hitting, where it's, where the flesh or bone or whatever it is, is contacting the thing. That drawing is going to have to be there, right? And then it's going to push. That's another contact. I mean, that's another extreme. That's another extreme, okay? Um, so, and you can test those. Click, you can test that, um, you know. Dump, click, 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 click push. You can test it out and see, see how the timing is, how it is, and you've got, you got your structure. Having done that, we've now got the best of the pose to pose method. It's clear and uh, da da da. <clears throat> then, do several straight ahead runs. Do the primary thing. the main thing and get it right and get it right real right you could say that all the Warner Brothers cartoons nearly all of them the really funny ones and good ones are, are uh, with Ken's stuff he just got the primary thing right on the coyote or Bugs Bunny there was not a lot, there wasn't drapery or fur or tail following or wind blowing. I mean, it was always just clump, clump. The main things that are going to set up the gag and tell the gag and push, punch, you know, tell it clear. Um, and they get that really right. Real right. It was the Disney guys who would get later, get the main thing really right, and then add all this other stuff, which would create the believability and allow you to watch a thing for, for 100 minutes instead of a eight minute short. So the primary thing would be, I would say, the passing position 
here the all the important things the little anticipate here pulling it up here maybe that maybe this dump dump right we've got get it right now you can also have and I, I, I might before you do that I'll just put a question in break break it down roughly to put in before roughly so I'm talking about putting in passing ie passing positions this is a refinement but this is what I do a lot now we got all these drawings then take drawing one and then do a straight ahead run on what's happening you've got your fence posts but you're running between fence post one and fence post two your next extreme you go straight ahead with the hips say everything's from the hips practically isn't it dancers always say start putting from the hips dairy you do you run on the hips right and then you do a run on the hips carrying it through and you run right through the scene with the hips you might then you may say okay I've got to get the head right uh, no maybe it's the shoulders next or the arms and we're going to ri run right through the scene with the shoulders where am I going to put the shoulders then we're going to do another run through the scene with the head straight ahead run then we're going to do another run with the hair say it's a guy with a ponytail or, or it's a woman with longer hair or a guy with longer hair that's going to be the last thing you might do if it was a dog the tail would be the last thing you do so here are the keys which tell the story like a comic strip here are the extremes most of them are contacts now that we have our building blocks in place we'll do straight ahead runs on top of our pose to pose okay now let's give them the wobble head Now let's give him a ponytail. Next, let's add some drapery, say a scarf. And there's no end to it. So you break it down so that you don't have to break your brain trying to do everything at once. And it's kind of a calculated, you, you, you get a calculated building mechanism <laughs> to fit in this keys and extremes in a cold-blooded fashion. And you don't even need to ha number the drawings particularly, maybe the keys or something. And then you do these straight ahead runs in different colors, however you do it, separate, separate. And you get this wonderful flow which is sitting on a real nice structure, right? The director still loves you, the producer loves you. Time's running out, because <laughs> you're doing a lot of work, but you get a really wonderful result. You get a beautiful flow and a structure at the same time. And this is the method that Mill, Frank, and all, they, they don't tell you this, particularly, I don't think. It came later. I mean, there was an animator uh, at Disney, who was a very good animator, who, who, when he did a Pluto or something, he would uh, have the whole scene, he'd do this, he'd have the whole scene finished, cleaned up, tested, with no tail. And then he'd just sit down with the finished drawings and put the tail in, working straight ahead. That shows you, you see, he's going to get a much better effect than if he's trying to figure out, where's the tail on this drawing? Where's the tail on that? Where's the tail, you know? I mean, and, and you, you just get wear yourself out and you think, well, I won't do much with it. But if I'm going straight ahead later, it's, I'm going to do nice things with it. These are guidelines, you know, this is what I would say, this is the way to think about it. You might want to do just a straight ahead thing or you might want to really lock yourself down into poses, but they figured out this wonderful combination, which seems obvious now, but it's, it's just wonderful. It just absolutely frees you because you're secure at the same time that you're being the natural way <laughs> combination. So we've set out the terminology of the difference between the storytelling keys 
and the extremes, the contacts, breakdowns or passing positions, and the in-betweens. We've shown the three ways to animate, the straight ahead, natural way, and the pose to pose calculated way, and the best way, the combination of both. In the next session, we're going to do more on timing and spacing, and some nuts and bolts stuff that you really do need to know.